Resistance to being an artist can come in many different forms, right? Artists and creatives suffer with all kinds of blockages on their journey, such as um, imposter syndrome, fear of failure, lack of community support, um, and understanding within oneself, you know, to even understand that this is, this is what I'm supposed to be doing with my life. And so um, a lot of times we try to blow it off as, oh, it's just a hobby or, you know, I'm not really serious about it. If I have a job, but if I make it with my art, fine. If not, you know, I have this other thing going on, but I'm not really going to put my all into art because who looks at art? Who who does art as a job? You know what? You know, that's that's a, a hard um, road, a hard journey. You hear this thing all the time about starving artists. And I'm harping on this part because a lot of people equate not going on their journey and doing what they're supposed to do based upon money. And that's a big one, right? Imposter syndrome is also a big one, but this whole notion of, you know, making it as an artist and being able to sustain and provide for yourself, a lot of people resist because of that thought. And a lot of times that thought doesn't come from yourself or within or above, that comes from your family and other people who are afraid of what they think that this journey is. And let me just say this real quick before I get into these um, points that I want to talk about. You know, I made up in my mind on when I first started on my art journey that I would never be a starving artist, never. And I've never been a starving artist. I've had a season where um, when I shut my business down, now mind you, it wasn't because it was failing. It was because I was working too hard. And I was like, I want a softer life. I think the the um, the month I closed was one of my record highs. And the next month was a, the month after I closed the brick and mortar. It was still a good month because I was going around doing um, paint and sip parties. And I was still selling original art. I had people calling me for stuff I had on the website. So you you have to put it in your mind that you're not going to claim that. You're not going to be that. That I, I didn't, that's not even something I was going to talk about as far as resistance and starving artists. But look, put that one out. Make up in your mind that you're not going to be a starving artist or a creative and then move from a place of intention with that in mind and know that you're going to be all right. Right? People are like, oh, but I want to be um, a gazillionaire. You might, you might, you might, you might not be. But you will survive and you will thrive because you're doing what you're called to do. All right, let me stop preaching. <laughs> let me get on to what I was supposed to be teaching and what I really, really want to share. So as I was thinking about this, I thought I'm always thinking about my experiences and what I've experienced as a professional artist, a gallery owner, an art teacher. I, um, that was one of the being a, a teacher of gifted and talented children in 11 and 12 grade juniors and seniors. That, that has to be one of the most pivotal moments in my journey as an artist because it was in that season which I'm just coming out of it that I saw how underrated and under regarded the arts are as a way of life um, the importance of it in life and why some people need to um, really dive deeper in it and be it and let me just say this because I wrote it down I, I want to really get this out because this is very important so oh, before I do let me introduce myself hi y'all my name is Maisha I'm in um, a traditional painter now a digital painter I'm a teacher I'm a mentor um, and I exist to help artists and creatives unleash into their highest creative selves I want to see my tribe, I want to see conscious creators, my people doing their thing in this world, helping to raise the vibration of this world, and um, living and thriving and being happy. So I'm just being who I needed when I was young. So join me on a journey. If this is um, touching you, speaking to you, subscribe to the channel, become a part of the community. I would love to get to know you more on your journey. So let me dive in. <clears throat> So what I was getting ready to say was um, that as a talented and visual arts teacher, I had the privilege of teaching some of the top students in um, my school. They were top both academically and artistically. However, 
a lot of them suffered with depression, anxiety, and I'm not talking about, oh, they make good grades. No, these were the top. Like, I think I had the valedictorian twice, two years in a row. And, um, you know, I'm not, I'm not going to put their beans and spill their stuff out, you know, publicly. I'm not going to do them like that. But I'll say some of the kids in my classes, they were really struggling and, and having stuff going on with them. And then I would see them sit down and work and do their thing. And I'm just like, yo, you need three weeks of just unpacking this. And you will be all right in math and chemistry. That's just a process, right? That's just a, and, and I'm saying that because that's what happened to me. I failed algebra three times in college. And it wasn't until I was in the art studio when I figured out, oh, I'm painting and I'm all about balance. You'll hear me talk about it in my um, art tutorials. What you do to one side, you do to the other. If something is off balance, how you cancel it out and bring it back into harmony and alignment is you balance it out. Same thing with an equation. But it took art for me to get to that place and then I aced it. I passed it with an A, right? And so here I was, you know, if not for math and how I had to process it, I would have graduated magna cum laude. I graduated summa cum laude because I kept failing uh, math, right? But if, if I had somebody to tell me dive deeper on, into your um, your art and, and let it unfold and put that energy over there and it will translate and transfer into your math and chemistry classes and biology. Some other stuff I, I dropped, I couldn't even, right? Because I didn't understand how to harness that creative power. And now as I get deeper in my journey, you know, I understand that you you can you you harness that kundalini power to harness that creative power to harness power of problem solving and all these other things. I could get into that. I think I'm off the subject. I didn't start talking. <laughs> I didn't start this video to talk about that. I started this video to talk about how you face resistance. So, and I, I should have just kept flowing where I was because you know. But let me just talk about how to face resistance. So. How you face resistance on your journey as an artist and creative, because remind again, it's going to come up. Your people, you know, your, your own self talk, it's going to come up. You know, you want to make money, you're going to go major in marketing or medicine or whatever, because we brilliant. Artists, we brilliant. We could, we could do whatever we want, right? But you are called to create in this genre, in this medium, in these mediums. I'm not going to lock you into one thing because artists, we like to dibble and dabble in multiple things. And that's what you're here to do, not just make all this money. You can go, you can make the money. And if you get on your journey, you'll make the money anyway. Excuse me. Oh, my head itching. I just washed it this morning, yesterday and this morning. All right. All right. So anyway, this thing here falling. Let me get this back up. Oh, Lord. Don't you fall on me, baby, because you know I paid a lot of my money for you, and I ain't got time to be filing no, um, no claims and all that. Baby, I'm in Africa, baby. It's going to take all day for me to get my dog home. All right, let me go. All right, so what was I saying? I was saying that, um, all right, so how do you face resistance? You turn towards it head on, okay? You turn towards that thing. And I mean that you have to accept that plain and simple, this is what makes you happy. I have a saying that I often say to myself, which is do what makes your higher self happy. There is a saying that says do what makes you happy, but you know, depending on what season or what vibe we in, what make us happy might not be the best thing for our spirit. So you got to check in with your higher self. Do what makes your higher self happy and then flow from there. And that's how you actually get to the essence of I know I am called to be an artist because this makes me truly happy. Quick example, back to my students. This kid just came to me. This kid is brilliant, obviously brilliant. Mad science, chemistry, whatever, all that stuff. The way he talked, the way he articulated himself, he is brilliant. But he have a thing for um, anime. 
and for digital drawing. And I met his dad and I know that his parents would like him to be white coach straight and narrow. But my message to this kid, if you hear me, B, I ain't gonna put you out. I'm not gonna put your name out. And I don't want your people calling me, man. Baby, do what makes you happy, what makes your higher self happy. Because if you do that, your anime will be known all around the world. And money will not be a problem for you. The resistance that we, that a lot, of, especially young people, is because of what we think society wants us to do and be and have and how to move and function in this world. And how society thinks, says that you will be successful. No. My baby, do what makes you happy. I really hope one day you see this video. Maybe Miss Miss uh, Maisha might call you, and and I might just text you <laughs> this video if I don't know if I have your number. But um, so let me put this thing into perspective a little bit better, right? When I'm talking about do what makes you happy, your higher self happy. If somebody calls you and say, "Look." I got a message from God, and this is real deal. This ain't no fluke. This was up. You got a week to live. You're going to die in a week. But in this week, you have two options. You can either, you can go shopping, and you can buy an endless amount of whatever you want. Clothes, jewelry, but it's just for you. And like you'll give it away. Like, don't add no whole bunch of stuff around this, right? We're just trying to get to the heart of it. You could go shopping, you could buy Ferrari, you could buy whatever you want, or you have an endless amount of money to create whatever you want. How you know that this is what you should be doing is you're gonna choose to create. You're gonna create. That's how you know that it's for you. And that's part of facing resistance because now you can say, I've looked at this thing on the deeper level. I love to shop. I love to ride in a nice car, but I will forego all of that to create something and do my thing. All right. So the point that I was making before that is that because you know that that makes you plain, old, happy and simple, just plain, just I mean, uh, just period. So the point I was making before that was that um, what makes your higher self happy? You know that your higher self wants to create rather than shop, which is we want that, too. Right. <laughs> but. Your higher self want that more. So the first way, again, is to face resistance. Face it head on and move from there. So another way, the second way to face resistance is to just work. Just get in get in the studio or get wherever you got, whatever you got, and get the going and get the doing. Okay, so if you don't have a studio, which most artists don't, you have a front room, Play that coffee table off and do what you got to do. You are a fashion designer. Clear that kitchen table off and sketch out them sketches and, you know, um, sketch out those patterns. Get to cutting, get to sewing, get it going. Just start. Just do it. Oh, I think about this um, fashion designer I met in New Orleans. Like, oh, it had to be about 10 years ago now. I mean, this guy, his stuff at that level, it was so dope, but it was simple. You know, I could tell he was kind of eclectic and he was getting there, baby. Now, who? Who, 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 who? His clothes are so fire and so dope and so just like otherworldly in a way. And I remember at the time he was going through some things because he was like, you know, trying to find himself. And of course, and now I remember I went to his apartment. He literally just had a table and a chair in his apartment and some clothes. And some, you know, I mean, uh, material and stuff all over, right? But he was doing his thing. And I guess that was his starving artist season. But you can't claim that. You have to know 
that you're, you're you know that's just a part of a part of a journey like this little season where you're gonna have some little struggles he was just getting to work if he had any resistance whatever else was going on in his life that didn't matter he was just doing the work i'm sure he could have stopped before a gazillion of reasons but he was facing all of his fears all of his resistance and he was just doing the work that is one of the most powerful ways to face resistance on this creative journey as an artist, as a creative, is to just do the work. And here is why that's so important. Because piece number one might be trash. Piece number two might be trash. Piece number three. And that's where the resistance starts coming up. Because now you didn't put all these hours again and you're really not feeling it. It's not flowing how you want it to do. Just keep working. That's where the, the that's where the imposter syndrome come in. Your family like, what is it? <laughs> Don't forget, I painted my first abstract piece, and my daddy was like, "Facts, like what, what?" And I, I I felt so discouraged, but I was like, you know what? And I was like, who are you kidding? What are you doing? You can you really do this? You know, at, who 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 pay, you know who pays like this in your community? What are you? I had all these things going on. I was young. But I was like, you know what? I'm going to just keep working. And I'm going I'm to work past that fear, past this resistance, and keep moving. I just had to keep working. Keep doing your thing. Do you. Do you. I wish I could make up a song called Do You. <laughs> That's so goofy. Anyway. Okay. So another way to face resistance, and I, I, I've, I think I've said it, I've touched on it in all the things that I've been saying so far, is to not be afraid to fail. All right, failure is just a part of life. Yeah, it suck, it hurt, but you cannot be afraid to fail. I know I just said that I would never be a starving artist and I would never, and even in my lean times, I ain't called it starving. I was like, I'm just a little lean, you know, I I'm not claiming that. You gotta be real careful with your words and who you be around, especially on this journey. But, um. Don't be afraid to fail. Because resistance will come when 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 a thought rises, but what if I had listen, I have I did a show, I did 10 pieces, I prepared, I did marketing, I probably had some advertisements in some magazines which were not cheap. And I might have sold one piece, maybe. I felt like a failure. And I was like, you know what? But it's okay. I learned A, B, C, D. And again, that's when all those thoughts come up. Am I really a creative? Am I called to do this? Blah, 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 blah. I'm going to tell you right now here, yes. Yes, you are. Yes, you were called. Yes, it is scary. Yes, you will fail. Oh, this is so good. All right, yes. Let me tell you all these things right now. Yes, you will fail. Yes, you will have some shows that won't go well. Yes, you will have some projects, but people, you've done it, and people are like, that's not, that wasn't what I was thinking. You didn't spend eight, nine, ten hours on it. Yeah, you got your deposit, but you're ready for the other half, and they're like, nah, that's, that's not it. Yes, you will Be passed over for be passed over for some stuff, right? Life, it's life. <laughs> but you can't be afraid of it. What did they say? Fear, false evidence appearing real. That's what fear is. Turn toward it, and don't be afraid of it. I know that's easier said than, said than done. I know it is. I mean, there are a few things now that's, that's, that may still scare me. That don't mean I'm not going to move. You know, if somebody come in here right now, somebody walked into your house and was like, I'm going to back the piss out your mama right now. You might be scared, but you're not going to let them back the piss out your mama. <laughs> so... I know that was a little crass example, but I'm just sad, right? Face it. I love y'all. 
I love you. I hope that this helped in some little way. Um, I will, and I would love to work with you through what are the blockages on your creative journey. Not from a therapeutic standpoint, but from a point of, okay, so you want to do a show, da 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 Okay, how do we eliminate those things and get to the, the doing, the work? All right? So if you would like to work with me, I would love to work with you. If you are a conscious creative and artist here to help raise the vibration of this planet and do what we are called to do, you can work with me. I'm going to drop a link below. I am at, um, it's now creativelyyoursmaisha.com. I think it's slash work with me, but I'll put the link down. Don't worry about it. Also, like, subscribe, and share. We're going to grow the community. We're going to um, do this together. And we're going to be creatively and artistically free all around this world. Okay? Okay. All right, y'all. Peace and love. That is it. I will see you on the next video. Bye.